All right, so on to transforming. All we're going to be messing with is the amplitude and the period. But we're going to label all these features like intercepts, maxes, and mins, and asymptotes. Basically, the gist is label, get key points, know how high and how low it goes, know when it starts repeating itself, and you'll be good. Um, what does a 2 out in front do? Well, the 2 is going to multiply all the values that were in cosine of x. So where it was 1 before, now it's going to be 2. Where it was 0, 2 times 0 is still going to be 0. Where it was negative 1, now it's going to be negative 2. And so it's going to stretch it out vertically. And so what we're going to say is that 2 affects the amplitude. Amplitude equals 2. The period is not affected, and so the period is still going to be 2 pi. So I'm going to label my, as my axis with 2 pi and pi, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. But now I'm going to go up to 2 and down to negative 2. The thing to remember about cosine is that the cosine of 0 was 1, and so our cosine graph started at the peak. Let's just sort of keep that as sine graph started at 0 and went like that because the y value at 0 is 0 and the cosine graph starts at 1 and dips down. So we're going to start instead of at 1, we're going to start at 2. And we're going to come back to the peak after 2 pi because it's the period. So halfway in between there is going to be the very low point, and halfway in between those two are when it hits its x-intercept. So, labeling my intercepts, I've got my pi over 2 and my 3 pi over 2, my max, I've got my max and my min, this is my minimum, this is my maximum, and my period is 2 pi. I don't have any asymptotes in this case. So 2 times cosine of x. In the same way, and you might want to try this next one on your own, just for practice, 5 is going to be what the amplitude is in this case. And the period, still unaffected. It's going to be 2 pi. So 2 pi, cut that in half, half, and half. So pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. And again, half of pi is pi over 2, and then I have 1, 2, 3 of those, so 3 pi over 2. I'm going to just adjust my y-axis so that it goes up to 5 and down to negative 5. And remember that our sine graph starts in the middle at equilibrium. So it's going to start here. It's going to repeat itself after 2 pi, but it goes up and comes back down halfway. So halfway in between, it reaches its peak, and halfway in between the two x-intercepts, it reaches its peak again. So a little smooth curve here. Try your best not to make them V's um, and all pointed and such. And so we've got an amplitude of 5, it goes up and down. Sign starts at the 0, and comes back. So, this one is on the inside. So in terms of what we were looking at before, this A function is going to be affecting the amplitude. That's what we just saw. This B function changes the period. And just like it being with the x all along, um, it, the horizontal changes are always opposite of what we think. So if it was x minus 5, it would actually shift to the right 5, where the plus k is going to shift it up. So this b is going to do the same thing that we're used to. The period's now no longer going to be 2 pi. It's going to be 2 pi divided by whatever our b is, because it's not multiplying by pi, it's actually dividing it by pi, opposite of what we expect. So, my amplitude is still 1, because that's 1 out in front.
no number out in front. The period is going to be 2 pi. The original period now divided by pi, and so my period is going to be 2. So when I go and graph my function, I'm going to label 2. I'm going to label half of that. I'm going to label half of that and half of that. So we have 1 half and 3 halves, or 0 0.5 and 1.5. The amplitude is 1, so I'm going to make it go up to 1 and down to negative 1. And it's a sine function, and so again, it's going to start in the middle because the sine of 0 is 0. So the only thing that changes is that instead of repeating at 2 pi, which is about 6.2, whatever, um, it's going to repeat at 2, which is very handy um, when you're using real-life situations, and we'll use some of those later on. Halfway in between there, it reaches its peak. Halfway in between those two, it reaches its minimum. And so we can see where it reaches its minimum. This is 3 halves, negative 1. This is 1 half, comma 1. You can see at what point in time it reaches its minimums, maximums, and we're good to go. Now on this next one, this one-third and this pi are affecting it. And so our amplitude is going to be one-third. And our period, just like on the last one, is going to be 2 pi divided by pi, which is 2. So still going to have our 2, 1, 1 half, and one, two, three halves. The difference is going to be instead of going up to one and down to negative one, we're going to have one third and two thirds. So I'm going to mark this as one third and negative one third. Cosines start at the peak. And so I'm going to start at one third and get back to one third once I get to two. Halfway in between there it's going to be at its minimum, so right here. And halfway in between there, it's going to cross the x-axis. They're all very symmetrical. And we have those. Keep in mind that these continue to go on in both directions. We're just graphing one cycle of it. Same thing with this. Keeps going. Now, on to tangent. Tangent we saw as this general curve where we had the asymptotes. Keep that in mind. And the period for tangent was pi originally. And so amplitude for this one is going to be non-existent. Tangent doesn't have an amplitude. Um, but the period is going to be period is going to be pi divided by 2. The original one, pi, divided by the 2 out in front. So, everything is going to be squished. Because we multiplied by 2, everything is going to be shrunk by 2 horizontally. It's called the horizontal shrink. So, where we had had pi pi over 2 before, now we're going to have pi over 2 marked and pi over 4. So where this was pi over 2 before, now that asymptote is going to be at pi over 4, half as quick. And where we are at 0 before, we're still going to be at 0, and we're still going to be at 0 at pi over 2, which was half of the original one. Keep in mind what our original tangent graph looked like. Asymptote at pi over 2. So now our asymptote's half as close, pi over 4. Crossed at pi. So now it's crossing twice as close, pi over 2. And so you can put another 
asymptote at 3 pi over 4 if you want. And we're just going to get the general gist of the tangent curve like that. Negative pi over 4. And there's your tangent curve. Now, what happens with the 5 if we put a 5 in front of a tangent curve? Um, well, the 5 stretches it out vertically just like the 5 stretches out cosine and sine curves and the 2 stretches out this. So we won't notice much of a difference. It's going to be steeper. But in terms of what we're doing, I want to be more concerned about where the asymptotes are. So our period is going to be the original pi divided by pi, or 1. And so I'm going to mark our 1, and then our 1 half, because it's 0 at the beginning and 0 once it repeats and halfway in between it has an asymptote. So you could repeat that again. At 3 halves it's going to have an asymptote. At negative 1 half it's going to have an asymptote. And again where I'm getting that is the period is pi so it repeats itself at pi and then halfway in between it's going to have the asymptote. And so what you'll notice is that it's stretched out more. Um, it'll go up faster, but I'm considered... I, I'm going to care more about where the asymptotes are and just the general shape of it than I am about what the 5 is doing. So there you have a bunch of different ones affected with a vertical stretch or shrink and a horizontal stretch or shrink. Best of luck in all your graphing endeavors.